<clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is June 6th, which also means that my daughter is four months old today. Fun fact. Let's see who's going to jump online with me this morning. We are in the Girl, Get Your Ships Together series. We're talking about relationships. Let's see who's going to jump on. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning, Gwinnett. I am having my Disney cup of coffee. I'm slightly obsessed with coffee cups, and I own all the princess cups. And it says on the back, it's hard to be a beauty when mornings are a beast. True, very true. Good morning, Esther. Good morning, Stephanie. All right. I don't want to take up your time. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Leticia. Okay, let's jump into this. Put my snot coffee. I'm bitter about that. <clears throat> okay, today we're talking about, let me give my disclosure really quickly. I am not perfect at these things. I am trying to better my life and relationships. But I am still a work in progress, just like you are still a work in progress. So there are definitely things that I'm still learning that I will talk about. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Kristen. So let's dive into this. Today we're talking about forgiveness. Jesus gave us great examples of forgiveness and why forgiveness is important. Obviously, he gave us the ultimate, um, the ultimate, ultimate example of forgiveness and someone else you know, paying a price and, and forgiving things that they did not even do. He did not do the things that he died for. That's the ultimate sign. But he also talks about it many times in parables. Um, we see it in his relationship with Judas and Peter or Simon Peter. Um, I want to take you to Matthew 18. And it, this is a parable. If you have the notes, they're in the little notes. Um, but I'll just read it really quickly. It says, Jesus tells us, I have granola bar in my teeth. Okay. Jesus tells us a parable about an unforgiving servant. A man owed his king more money than he could ever pay. And when he begged the king for mercy, the king forgave the entire debt. The same man, the same man, who had been forgiven for so much, then found a servant who owed him a small amount of money. When that servant asked for mercy, he refused. The man that had been forgiven refused to give mercy on the man who owed him just a little bit. And he put him in prison. When the king heard about this, he put the first servant in prison. The one he had forgiven much. He put him in servant in prison. This lesson of this parable, Jesus said, is that this is what my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Ouch, 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 ouch. Forgiveness is important. Forgiveness is mandated. And let me tell you this before we go any further. Forgiveness says more about you than it does the other person. Forgiveness says more about your character. Forgiveness says more about your relationship with God than it does um, about the other person, if the other person deserves it, or if they didn't deserve it, or what they're going to do with that forgiveness afterwards. It just doesn't matter. It says more about you. I um, have really been studying forgiveness for my own reasons. Forgiveness is hard. It's something that I think we have to learn and then relearn and then relearn, um, just like everything else is, um, <clears throat> as far as our character is concerned. But I came across this book, and it's a, it's about how to have good relationships with people. And I really studied on forgiveness. And there are a few forgiveness myths that I want to tell you about this morning. Myths that we hear, um, but I don't really think are communicated clearly. So the first one is this. Forgiveness isn't, this is an isn't, it isn't forgive and forget. To forget a memory is often hard, but to use that memory as an opportunity opportunity to remember to forgive is powerful. So oftentimes we hear, just forgive and forget, just forgive and forget. And we, we often in our head associate forgiveness with forgetfulness. Well, if I can forget, forget, 
then okay, I can forgive. But if it's something that you cannot forget, it's a hurtful, harmful memory, and it, it keeps coming back, it's taunting you, you can't forget it. We can't forget our memories. God didn't create us to have a memory so that we could forget all the time. That's not how we were created. So we're wired to have memories and to mem and to remember things. So oftentimes we feel like if we can't forget it, then we're not actually forgiving. And I don't think that that's fact. And especially in studying this, I loved this because it says instead of being angry and bitter and frustrated when you remember this situation or you see this person and you automatically go to that thing that they did to hurt you, if you use that memory as an opportunity to remember to forgive. Every time you see that person or you come in contact with that situation and they pop up and you go a little bit inside of you, then you just say, God, thank you for bringing this to my memory, God. And I pray that you would help me to forgive this person again today. And then it becomes a daily act of forgiveness until you really overcome and you understand how to love through that forgiveness. Good morning, all these people that are coming on. Christine, Amy, Jana, Clorinda. Good morning, Polly. So forgiveness isn't forgive and forget. It is remembering and remembering to forgive. Remembering to forgive. We're not going to forgive and forget, but we can remember to forget. The second thing that forgiveness isn't is reconciling. Oftentimes, we think that if we can't reconcile, that we're not really forgiving. And reconciliation is a beautiful thing. I'm definitely not minimizing that. If that's an opportunity that you have in the situation and the relationship with the person, if you have opportunity for reconciliation, you should absolutely take it if it's real reconciliation. But oftentimes we feel like if we can't reconcile, I'm like this. I'm an analytical person. I want to get to the bottom of it. I'm also a confrontational person, which confrontation is not a bad thing. I'm a confrontational person. I want to confront the issue so that we can come to a resolution and we can forget it. And I'm realizing now that that's not always possible. Number one, I can't go around confronting everybody and their issues. I might be ready to deal with it, but that other person might not be. And then it just ends in frustration. And I don't want that. That's not what reconciliation should bring. It should not bring more frustration. And then there's times where we can't get in contact with the other person. In, in all reality, maybe the other person has passed away. Maybe the other person has moved away and we've lost contact with that person. Maybe that's how it is. <clears throat> Allie says she's like that too. See, I hope I'm not the only one. But reconciliation is not always possible. So in that case, what do we do? It says, sometimes it is impossible <clears throat> To reconcile takes two people, but to forgive takes one. And so we still have to learn in our hearts how to forgive that person even when reconciliation isn't a possibility. Let's be honest, sometimes confronting the issue just causes more drama and causes more um, conversation and the conversation is heated and then there's more anger and then there's more offenses and then there's more. Sometimes it's just better to learn to forgive in your heart. Now. You can't just merely say you forgive someone and still have bitterness towards them. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is in our hearts. It starts in our hearts. We talked about this last semester. And then it comes to our heads. And then we have to remember to forgive that person. It's in our heads. And then it's in our actions. It's in our actions and how we love. The last thing that I put here that forgiveness isn't is it isn't minimizing the offense. Don't minimize what you feel in order to forgive it. Don't say it really wasn't a big deal, it's not a big deal, even though you're festering over it at night before you go to bed. Don't say it's fine, everything's fine, but really you can't stop your, your train of thought and you're constantly see that person and you're like, it's fine, whatever, I'm just gonna go the other way. That's not forgiveness. That's not forgiveness. Sometimes um, space and distance for a moment helps us to get clarity, but eventually you have to be around that person. You have to see that person. If they're a stranger, just forgive them in your heart and let go because holding on to that offense is not going to get you anywhere. And we'll talk about that this week as well. But don't minimize that offense. If it's something that hurt you, take it to God. God, help me to forgive them. God, I don't know what they were going through when this offense happened, but it is a big deal in my heart. It did hurt my feelings. God, I need you to 
I need you to heal those. I need you to, to let that go. Help me to let that go so that I can move forward in forgiveness. Forgiveness is powerful because forgiveness, it says in that parable, forgiveness can keep us from heaven. Unforgiveness can keep us from heaven. Unforgiveness can keep us from having, being in right relationship with God because God gave forgiveness and grace so freely that if we're going to be a reflection of God, which we talked about in the beginning of this study on Monday, if we're going to be a reflection of God, then forgiveness is a characteristic that we have to have in relationships. And it is proof. The more time we spend with God, the better our relationships are. The more fruit we produce, the more better of an outcome we have because we're, we're aligning ourselves with the character of Christ in that conversation that we have with God. And then when we're having relationships with people, we can learn to, oh, God did that for me. I can do that for them. God's forgiven me for so much. Oftentimes we forget to kind of turn that mirror. We're very um, quick to see the faults in other people. But if we were to turn the mirror, it would probably be very striking. What We, we judge ourselves by our intentions and we judge other people by their actions. Um, but sometimes our actions and our intentions don't line up either. It says, if we learn, if we do not learn to forgive as we go along, we will build walls and grudges in our relationships. They'll quickly break down on a fundamental level. I've seen this in my life. But if we learn how to forgive one another, we will be able to create long and lasting relationships. And I think that this is a characteristic of someone who follows Christ. They have long and lasting relationships, not their, their two and no more, their one and no more, but, but they have lasting relationships with, with their circle of people. That people from the outside look at them and say, I, they, yeah, she forgave me for that one little thing, or I was kind of rude to her and then she was nice to me. I wonder what that's about. And we can project Christ through our relationship with other people. Sweeping problems under the rug doesn't make for healthy relationships. Neither does being unable to forgive problems. So if this is you this morning and you're saying, gosh, I, uh, I really have a problem forgiving. I really have a problem forgiving. I understand this. I'm owning up to it right now. It is hard sometimes. Then let's take that and make that a matter of prayer today. God, we're learning about your character this week. This is our prayer that you would help us to discover, God, the unforgiveness in our heart and help us to, to pass along the grace and forgiveness that you've given to us, God. You have forgiven us for more than what we can even ask for. You know, the eye rolling, the little comments that come out of our mouth, God, the unforgiveness, God, that, that builds walls and grudges. God, I just pray that you would help us, God. Help us to forgive those people, God, to move on, God, not just to forgive and forget, God, because that's not possible, Lord. Help us to remember this and then choose forgiveness every single day, every single moment we see that agitation, God. Help us to choose forgiveness and choose love, even though people don't deserve it, God. Help us not to minimize the things that happen to us in our life, God, but to take it to you, God, to kneel before your cross, God, and let you take those hurts and those pains, God, and then you can give us love. Lord, and I pray for reconciliation. God, if reconciliation is not an opportunity, God, I pray that you would help us, God, to find peace within ourselves, God. Reconciliation takes two people, God, but forgiveness just takes one. God, so I pray that we would just learn to be forgiving women, God, that we would learn to offer your grace and your peace, Lord God, to all that we come in contact, God, no matter how big and how deep the offense is, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I had no idea I was actually going to go into a prayer, so I'm sorry I did not give you the heads up, but it felt very appropriate. Um, forgiveness does mean, just a little note, to let it go. If you forgive, you can't pick it up. So you can't say, I've asked for forgiveness for this, and then continue to pick it up. Ladies, I know that today is a hard one. Forgiveness is tough. But we're going to get through this together. And as we continue to unfold these next couple of weeks, we're really going to learn boundaries. We're going to learn some healthy choices in friendships and relationships, um, relationships with our spouses, how to have healthier relationships there, how to have healthy relationships when we're dating. All of these things, we're going to definitely not leave you on a cliffhanger. We're going to get a little bit deeper on how we can actually make these choices. But the best place to start is what we can learn specifically from Jesus's life. So... I am super excited about tomorrow. It's one that cuts deep for me, 
but I'm excited to share it with you. So I will see you tomorrow at 6.30. Also, tidbit, I am posting the YouTube video um, in the comments section. If you're wanting that for to share with a friend, to email to a friend, um, please let me know. I would ask that you wouldn't share it on Facebook because Facebook is our private community. They can, any women can join this community uh, and be a part of this. But if you do want to send it to someone that isn't on Facebook via email um, or text message or something, then please share because we all need to grow and I'm going to humble myself and put myself out there. Um, but that's not really my intention. So don't share it on Facebook if you can, and then just email or text it to your friends if you really want to put them in. Good morning, Whitley. Hope you're having a good day. Bye guys. I will see you tomorrow.